Hi guys, welcome to the class of uh, introduction to philosophy and critical thinking. And today our topic is how philosophy is done, truth, proposition, argument and fallacies. Uh, due to the length of the this topic, uh, I have divided this into two parts. And today's lecture covers the first part of the topic in which we are going to discuss uh, how does philosophy is done, then the difference between dialectic versus debate and uh, what is truth is definition in philosophy and its characteristics so let's start uh, uh, discussing one by one uh, how philosophy is done is the as we know philosophy uh, the meaning of the philosophy is love for the knowledge or for so philosophy is aimed as establishing knowledge and understanding it is as a kind of inquiry so when we are doing philosophy actually we are finding out about the knowledge and about the truth and what is going on around us which we have discussed in our first uh, lectures even where certain knowledge about a particular issue cannot be had there are often interesting things to learn about why we cannot have certainty and what sort of uh, less than certain reasons there are for a for or against holding a position on the issues so during philosophy pro philosophy process may we might not find all the things but at least uh, we can find that what we are not finding what is certain and what is uncertain so it may be not giving us the ultimate uh, ultimate answer to that but it is telling us the things other things so rational inquiry may be interesting and fruitful even when we are denied straightforward answer to our initial questions so <clears throat> we will go to the different path to find out the uh, truth or the knowledge or the validated knowledge once we raise a philosophical issue whether about the nature of the justice or about the nature of reality we want to ask what can be said for or against the various possible answer to our questions so as we know that uh, in philosophy we raise a lot of uh, questions and issues to and we try to solve it so we will find out that what uh, things go in the favor of that thing which in that issue and what is going against those uh, issues so here are <clears throat> here we engage in formulating the arguments so basically when we are doing this about an issue against and for so we are formulating uh, arguments some arguments give us better reason are accepting their conclusion than others some arguments are uh, we accept and some some we don't and some argument takes us to the a result and some don't so once we have formulated an argument we want to evaluate the reason reasoning it offers so after uh, formulating the arguments what we do we evaluate each of the argument and see what they tell if you want to know what philosophers do this is the pretty good answer that philosophers formulate and evaluate the arguments so basic function or job or the thing of a philosopher is to formulate the argument for and against some uh, issues and then argument so uh, how the philosophy is done the next topic in the philosophy done is dialectic versus debate so we always heard these two words debate we often heard and we see that debates are going around us on the tv channels or things like that so let's see what is the difference between dialectic and debate so through which we will reach to a, a knowledge for this reason we are discussing this once a philosophical position is considered we want to ask what argument can be advanced in support of or against that issue so when there is issue is there then we try to formulate like a, a, we have discussed before arguments against and for so that uh, we then want to examine quality of the arguments like i already told you we evaluate them and see the it is a quality argument or not so evaluating flawed argument flawed mean defective uh, often points the way toward the argument and the process of formulating clarifying and evaluating argument continue so if we have a flawed or in defective uh, argument then we try to correct it uh, and go to the right one this method of question and answer is which we are uh, repeatedly formulate clarify and evaluate argument is known as the dialectic 
So we <coughs> dialogue, we, we we put the questions and we put um, and then we argument and then do repeatedly uh, refining it and to reach to the final arguments. So dialectic looks a lot like debate, but a big difference lies in the respective goals of the two activities. So next is debate. It looks like same, but it is actually it is not. The goal of a debate is to win by pursuing pursuing an audience that your position is right and your opponent is wrong. So in debate, we try to win in a in a case or in a, a debate. So we argue that we will win and other we are right and other person is not right. Whereas dialectic on the other hand is aimed at inquiry. The goal is to learn something new about the issue under discussion where we are not trying to make someone right or wrong, we try to find more things about that issue. Unlike debate, in dialectic your sharpest <coughs> critics is your best friend. So who in, in dialectic things who is uh, becoming your critic, uh, it is your best friend because it will argue with you and you have to answer that. That is like I always tell that. Uh, a devil's advocate. So critical evaluation of your argument brings new evidence and reasoning to light and when you talk more and more about uh, in a critical way do you bring more uh, more uh, more uh, arguments and new evidence and reasoning into the uh, issues. The person you disagree with on a philosophical issue is often the person you, st you stand to learn the most from and uh, because if you, when you are talking about different things you learn more about for this reason I'm always saying in my class that if someone you argued maybe even maybe your argument is not right so when we are arguing about something or giving reason we learn more about the things so dialectic is sometimes referred to as a uh, Socratic method after the famous uh, originator of this uh, systematic style of inquiry so Socrates has uh, developed this method of uh, dialect so as we know that philosophy is basically mainly concerned with the getting at the truth about the things that what things are about everything. So as the variety of rational inquiry it is natural to think that science and the philosophy are mainly concerned with getting at the truth about the things. There are some interesting and some confused challenges to idea that philosophy and science are truth oriented. So but uh, now let's assume that rational inquiry is truth oriented and addresses a couple of questions about truth. So there are two questions we have to address. Uh, that what it was what is it for a claim to be true so if someone is claiming someone is saying something so how we will say that it's uh, uh, claim what what is claim is, is true and then how do we determine so methodology of determining the uh, claim is two different things two things two steps we do so it is important to keep these two questions separate so in philosophy the definition of a truth is in the metaphysics and the philosophy of language, the property of sentence, I mean characteristics of sen sentence, assertion, what you are saying, believe what believes you have, or thoughts, or proposition that are said in ordinary discourse, I mean in, uh, in a common life, uh, to agree with the facts or uh, to state what it is in the case. So it should be um, agreeable with the what is happening around. So this is the definition of truth. So in the next few slides we will discuss what is truth in detail. So let's uh, explain the definition of truth which we have uh, read in the previous slides. So as we have uh, said that truth in metaphysics and philosophy language is the property or the characteristics of the sentence, what we are saying in that sentence. Assertion, a forceful statement, what the statement that we are giving, beliefs, what we are in believing that, the thought, what we are thinking, and the proposition is statement that expresses a judgment or a opinion. So these all things, what when we are saying, we are saying a sentence, we are giving some statement, we are telling our belief, what we are thinking, and the what, you know, whatever is the judgment, the opinion about anything, is all in a ordinary discourse. Ordinary mean in a in a formal discussion of subject 
in speech or writing to agree with the facts or the state what it is in the case what actually it is so we are comparing these all these things with what is actually happening and if we think that this is the same so it is truth if it is not then you know simply this this is the way we will find out and we do the experiment or we do the different methods to find out the real things about these assertions about beliefs about thought about propositions everything so let's define the truth in a simple way truth is the property of being in accord same with the factor the reality so a truth mean like i already explained to you what we are saying if it is in is same as what are the facts or reality so it is truth in everyday language truth is typically ascribed to the things that aim to aims to represent reality or otherwise correspond to it so it is even it is uh, represent reality or it is close to or align with the reality such as belief proposition and declarative sentences declarative sentences mean anything we give the opinion or the statement truth is usually held to be opposite of falsity so uh, to to make to uh, explain it to make it clear actually the truth is opposite to the falsity falsity mean which is not truth or lie so keep discussing about the truth uh, the questions about how we know whether something is true or epistemic epistemic mean it is questions mean it is related to knowledge or the degree of his validation so if so, if I, you are saying something to me if i have knowledge i can say is it true or it is not true i can validate it or i can not validate it so it's basically it depend on the what kind of knowledge we have so we can say if is true or if is not true but the question of what it is for something to be true is not a not an epistemic issue so the truth of the claim is quite independent of how or whether we know it will be true if you are not sure about this consider the claim that there is a intel <coughs> intelligent life on other planet and the claim that there is no intelligent life on the other planet so we assume we don't know which of these two claims are true but surely one of them is whichever of these claim is true it is being true does not depend in any way on whether or how we know it it is true or not true so <clears throat> it is not only depend on our knowledge maybe we don't know that on the other plant planet there is a life or is not so one of that will be what will be right even though we we are not we don't have the knowledge so this truth is not just a, a related to what the knowledge we have so if we don't have knowledge then you know we cannot say is it true or not is not true there are many truths that will never be known or believed by anyone and appreciating this is enough to see that truth of a claim is not relative to belief knowledge proof or any other epistemic notion so this is a discussion that some people say the truth is depending on the knowledge but sometimes we don't have the knowledge so uh, we cannot say this is truth or this is not truth for example you are telling me something and if i know that i can say yes or no or i can validate or invalidate but if i don't know about for sure that you know we cannot uh, do that for this reason we keep asking question and we keep doing the philosophical discussion or research to find out the exact uh, and with the time with the knowledge with the technology we can find the truths continue our discussion about uh, truth uh, but then what is it for a claim to be true so how we can say that this claim is true or this claim is not true the anything you said is right or anything you said is not right the ordinary everyday notion of truth would have it that a claim is true if the world is in the way the claim say it is so if we see uh, if people are saying if this world is saying that this is right so we will say right so this is our evidence of the truth and this is pretty much all we are after when we make a claim we represent some part of the world as being a certain way so what is around us you know we say that for example if it is we are saying it is night so we see around and we say it's a darkness around us so we say it is night so it is course our statements correspond with with, with the world with the around with the surrounding of us if 
if how my claim represent the word fits with the way word is then my claim is true like i give you the example that you know for example i'm intelligent so i can show you my grades so it will validate my truth so truth then is correspondence or good fit between what we assert what we are saying and the way the things are so this is the for this is i highlighted the truth then is correspond mean is correspond mean related to a good fit or is getting the good fit between what we assert and what we uh, what what the things are so uh, is truth is related to the meaning what the what you have sent said or right in the sentence that is our next uh, potential uh, source of confusion about truth that uh, might be worth addressing at this point so confusion is due to same word sentences can be used in lots of different ways so you can say one truth in different way but what you want to say will be the truth so there's a lot of vagueness and ambiguity built into the natural language so your language your natural language maybe not could be not could not be explained as you wanted to so there are a lot of uh, confusion and ambiguity vagueness in that so attempting uh, pitfall uh, is in thinking is about truth is to think that truth is somehow relative to the meaning or the open to interpretation so we cannot interpret interpret the sentence and the meaning of the things basically it is what you are saying what is meant by what what you wanted to say is called truth or non truth <clears throat> so and since relatively an issue is here is entirely linguistic it is simply the result of the meaning of the words and sentence being relative to linguistic convention convention so you know sometimes you use special terms to explain something like you know in sub in some subject we have to use special terminology to explain the things uh, but our everyday notion of truth is not about linguistic convention so any more than if it is about knowledge or belief so in a common language in a common life we we don't see this um, uh, there shouldn't be linguistic uh, convention because you know in law maybe for this reason when we are writing contract we will write in the specific terminology we used or when we are talking about any business deal or anything else or we are writing some uh, medis- medical report then we will use this uh, convention conventions or specific terms but in common life we will use what we, we are meant by that so our notion of truth is fundamentally about the corresponding between what is meant by a sentence and the way the word is so we will see that uh, what we are saying is correspond with the what is happening actually so that is truth so uh, philosopher often refer what it is meant or expressed by sentence as a proposition which we are going to discuss in the ne- prop- about definition of proposition in the next lecture after a complex and very detailed discussion about truth let's see that what are the characteristics of the truth are so number 1 is absolute when something is absolute it means that it is not dependent upon anything else we can better understand absolute if we understand it opposite that is relative so something that is relative has a necessary dependence on something else so absolute mean this truth or this statement is not depending if or but so this is the things correspondence truth is absolute so it correspond to reality the way things really are because truth exists reality is what correspond to truth we understand this when it comes to the true and false statements like we have already discussed so our truth our statements what we are saying should correspond what is in actual in reality is then coherence coherence is internal cohesion and consistency truth cannot contradict itself internally or externally so it is very important if we are saying something and it is true it shouldn't contradict and usually when the things are contradict these are not truth then the next characteristic is universal the truth is universal in that is applies equally to everything or every person with a specific set of parameters so in a special conditions this should apply all over the world 
with everyone with all the situation it's called universality so correct the truth should have be universal so then exclusiveness while the universal aspect of truth described is broad nature the exclusive aspect of truth described is narrow and specific character so it should be very precise it shouldn't be vague so it should be good all over the world but it should also be good that in a specific situation or will be very specified so if there is anything if it is not any specially specified become vague mean it has maybe some confusions so the last one is objective so the word objective mean in the realm of experience but independent of a person's thought or perceptions truth is not depending of any person's desires beliefs or the emotions so the truth should be independent of personal feelings or personal perceptions or thought it should be uh, something neutral so these are the few of the characteristics of the truth and um, we have discussed the how the philosophy uh, is done and then how the what is the truth though in the next part we will going to discuss the uh, uh, what is proposition argument and fallacies so we can understand that how philosophy is actually done so if you have any question please let me know thank you for your time and listening